What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. Now I have another woodworking project for you, a nice simple one, but there's a few skills involved in it that you can test out your woodworking skills with and develop them with. So this is a double sided blackboard that I've made for my daughter. So uh, she's about two years old now and she's um, starting to draw all over everything so she should enjoy this. It could also be used as a shop sign if you so choose. And uh, like I said, there are skills in this that will go to making cabinet doors and that kind of thing. So we have four bridal joints to do. We have two half lap joints. We have a dado then to cut inside the slot or board into. We use blackboard paint to paint the MDF to get that blackboard finish on it. So we'll do all that in the video. So yeah, it's a nice little project. There's a few skills involved. It can all be done with hand tools. All you need is a hand saw and some chisels and you should be good to go. You get to practice making some joints and uh, yeah, nice little project. Let's crack on and do it. Right, materials for this project, it's gonna be nice and simple. So I have a six mil thick sheet of MDF. It is two foot by four foot, so a quarter inch thick. And I bought some prepared, just pine, just white deal. This is 48 by 34 millimeters. So I think roughly an inch and three eighths by an inch and seven eighths. So it's gonna be a nice light frame, but it should be sturdy enough. And then we just have some hinges a couple of hook and loops. So this is just to hook the frame together. So when we spread out our frame to stop it sliding out like that, we just have two hooks either side. You can use chain for that either if you so choose. And then we have some blackboard paint. This is great stuff. You can paint it on your walls and turn your wall into a blackboard if you so wanted to do that. But we will be using it on this MDF. This is really smooth, nice sheet. So it'll be perfect. We put a bit of this on it and we'll have two nice blackboard faces. So first thing we want to do is cut our blackboard face because that's going to determine the size of our frame. This will be recessed 10 mil into our frame all around. So we shall size up our front and back piece first. Let's do that. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Sometimes with the skylights shining on the board, it's hard to see the pencil marks, but hopefully you can see it. So like I say, this is a four foot by two foot board or it is 61 centimeters or 610 mil wide this way, two feet in other words. And uh, we're going to use the full length or width of the board. And uh, we're going to use the manufactured ends. So I'm going to cut this section from this side and that section from that side, just because we know these are nice and square. Then I've measured in 42 centimeters or 420 mil. So it's going to be 420 by 610 and it'll be recessed 10 mil in into our frame all around. So the actual face of the blackboard that you will see will be 400 mil by 590. So that will give us the internal dimensions of our frame and we can work our frame from that. So that's what I've measured out, just a line here at 420, in from that end, 420. So we'll cut these two now, that'll give us our two faces and then we can measure out the size of the frame we're gonna need. So let's do that. Okay, so here we are. We have our blackboard pieces cut and remember our width is 420 mil. I've just cut the uprights now. So the lengths I bought were 1.8 meter lengths. When I measured them, they weren't actually 1.8 meters. They were 1.79 uh, meters. So I just have to cut them in half. So they're, it's almost three feet to the top. So um, I think it's 985 millimeters in height. So just about three feet. If you make them three feet, they'll be perfect for a toddler. So uh, yeah. Now, what we need to do is make the width of our frame. So remember, we're gonna recess this in 10 mil either side. So we're gonna cut a dado all the way around this and recess this MDF 10 mil into our frame. So our total measurement, bearing in mind that each of our uprights are 46 millimeters and the gap between them is 420. That gives us a total width of 512 and we need to minus 10 mil either side. So that will bring us down to 492 will be the width that we need to cut our cross pieces. So our bottom piece will be half lap joints and our top pieces will be two bridal joints. So we need to cut four cross pieces now, 492 millimeters. So that's how we get the width of our frame. So if that makes sense, you just measure this width and minus your dado depth 
either side and that'll give you the width of your cross pieces if that makes sense it'll all make sense when we're assembling anyway you'll see how it all goes together so let's cut our cross pieces and then we can mark out our bridle joints and our half lap joints let's do that so 492 millimeters I better not mess that up So we're all marked out now for our cross pieces as well. So again, bear in mind that we're going to be recessing 10 mil into this piece and 10 mil into our top piece. So I have marked the width of this piece on our top. That's where our bridle joint is going to sit. So that will sit right there. This piece will sit 10 mil into that. That gives me my measurement from where my bottom piece needs to go because this piece again will sit 10 mil into this. And these will be our half lap joints. So that will sit there like that. And that should be good. So that's essentially our frame. This will close in 10 millimeter side. So you can see we have a 10 mil gap there and same on the other side. So now it's only a case of mark our half laps and mark our bridles out. And uh, then we can start cutting these things out. I'm gonna cut all this on the bandsaw and we'll finish it with a chisel and a, a coping saw maybe. So let me do that now. Okay, we'll mark our half laps for us. And this is pretty simple. We're just going half the depth of the wood in here and then we'll be taking half of it out this piece that's going to sit on here and these are 34 mil thick so 17 millimeters i've set the marking gauge to that so i'm just going to square my lines down take my marking gauge and we can just mark that we can fill that in then so we can see it that's right there same on this side Let's scribe our line and we'll just draw it in just to make it easier to see. There we go. It's that side of the half lap marked. Now I always like to use a timber I'm using to mark out my cuts. So I've marked the width with this piece and I'm going to mark how much I need to take out with the bottom piece. So line everything up. And I need to be roughly there, so mark that. And actually, this is going to be my face side, so this is the side that's going to be coming out. So I want to take the back piece off, so make sure we mark all our face sides. So yeah, it'll be this piece I'll be taking off. So okay, just roughly square that all the way around down halfway, take our marking gauge again, mark that out there, mark that out there, we can draw in that line then, there we go just like that, mark our way so there's no mistakes, so we'll take that piece out there, that piece out there, and that will sit on like that. Now, I'll mark the rest of these exactly like that. Okay, so we're on to marking the bridle joints now. So this piece is gonna sit into this like this. I've marked my joint number one to number one. So I've marked all my joints to where they go. So they're numbered one, two, three, four on the front and five, six, seven, eight on the back. And uh, as you can see, this is gonna be, I'm gonna move this side and this side. That's going to be my tenon, and that's going to be either side of my bridle joint, and that's going to slot into that. So, to mark your bridle joint, or a tenon, or if you're doing a mortise and tenon like that, you always mark it with the width of the chisel you're going to use. This is a 12mm chisel, so I will be removing a 12mm section there, so I can get my chisel down into that. So, these pieces are, what did I say they were? 35mm, so 17mm to the centre. This is a 12mm chisel, so it comes 6mm off that off the center that will give you 11 mil in set my marking gauge scribe the line 11 mil all the way around same on this side same on this side 
I will be removing the cheek pieces, which are the outside pieces on this one, leaving the center tenon, and I'll be removing the inside piece or the mortise section of this one, and then they will slot together just like that. And again, measure the width of your timber. So line them up on top of each other like that. Mark your line square all around so you can see how far in your cut needs to be. And uh, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Nice and simple to do. It's a nice little joint. It's a good little strong joint and uh, it's nice to practice. So uh, this is a good little thing to make a frame and make, try and get all your joints to be square anyway. So that's the bridal joint and we have the half lap joint. Now, I'm gonna mark out the rest of these and then I'm gonna take it to the bandsaw and I'm gonna do all my cutting on the bandsaw just because it's convenient to do so. You can do it with a hand saw. If you have a tenon saw, perfect, or a Japanese saw that would do the job as well. So yeah, let me mark the rest of these and I'll get back to you. Okay, there's all our joints marked out, our two frames ready to go. So I've just numbered them one to one, two to two, three to three, four to four, and five, six, seven, and eight. Just so I know how they all go together. Just as your bridal joints, make sure you mark your waist. So mark your cheeks waist and mark your tenon waist or your mortise waist because it's easy uh, when you're cutting these things out one after the other to get mixed up and to cut out the tenon when you should have cut off the sides. And I've done it before, so uh, it does happen, and uh, it's a bit of a pain. So uh, yeah, mark all your waste so you know exactly what you're taking out of our piece. So now I'm gonna go to the bandsaw and I'm gonna set up all these cuts, and I'm just gonna run them quickly over the bandsaw just to make it nice and easy. And uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay, at the bandsaw now, and I'm gonna run all these cuts through, but I'm gonna cut my tenons first and then my um, mortise sections of my bridal joint mix. I think they're called a mortise section, I could be wrong. But that's the center section we were moving. So I always want to be on the waist side of my line when I'm cutting to allow for the curve for the blade. I could just cut the tenon piece and then cut the center section out. But what I'd actually do is I'd end up losing the um, curve for the blade off this. This guy would be the right width, but I'd lose the curve for the blade either side of the width of my tenon and my tenon would be loose inside my joint. So cut all your tenon pieces first, then cut all your mortise sections next. So that fence will just have to be adjusted out the way, just a touch, just to make sure that I'm cutting on the waist side of my mortise line and the waist side of my tenon line, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna cut all my tenons first, then all my mortises second. So let's do that, nice and simple. That's most of our joints cut out. Everything is chopped on the bandsaw, so we have our tenon pieces cut, and we have our half laps cut on the bandsaw, and the center of our bridle joints are cut as well. I just put an extra cut in them just to make it easier to remove that material. I'll do that with a coping saw and a chisel now in a minute. But next, I have to cut the other part of our half lap joints now. This obviously is too long to go onto my bandsaw. I don't have the throat or the depth of cut, so we're going to do this by hand. So, bench hook, bench hook. And our cross cut saw. And voila. Now again, not to this, I just wanna cut on the waist side of the line, try and keep it as nice and as square as I possibly can. And just make sure I don't go down past my line, just like that. I'm gonna put the jacket on because it is cold today in the shed. Even with that heater going, it gets cold pretty quick. It's down about freezing outside, so. There we 
go. We can always clean up a small bit with the chisel. So I have four more of them to cut now. I'll do that and we start knocking it out with the chisel then. Right, we're knocking out our half laps now. There's not much to this. It's just a case of use a chisel. So use a chisel up to it like this. I'm just gonna tap it out, use the mallet. You can use your hand too if you want. The point is pretty soft, but um, work it both sides. So I work it to a point from this side, turn around, work it from the back side, and then we level it across. A router plane would be ideal for this. Something I have to get myself actually is a router plane. So uh, I'm on the lookout for one. There's been a few um, projects now where I really needed one and I haven't got it. But like I say, this will come out pretty quick with the chisel. Work at both sides. Start taking smaller and smaller cuts as you approach your marking gauge line. There's not much to it. Flip it around and work it from this side. down to my marking line there now and so what I don't want to do is go all the way through and burst out the other side so we want to work turn this around now and work it back from the other side a little bit of a clean out then and voila one half lap joint cut now we can just test fit our other piece and then just work your edges with your chisel until you get a good fit well that's all work from one side work from the other Take your time down to your marking line, smaller and smaller bites, and then straight across. Now I'll finish all four of these and I shall get back to you. Right, we nearly have all our joints cleared out now, so it's onto the just knocking out my mortise section out of my bridle joint. Again, I'm not sure if it's called a mortise section or it's, if it's the bridle itself you're knocking out, but um, again, this is nice and simple. This is where our 12 mil chisel comes into it. So we've marked a 12 mil um, hole for our tenon and our mortise section. So we're just gonna knock a 12 mil chisel down through it now. And again, it's just working from either side, nice and easy. We've already removed most of the material with the coping saw and uh, it was just a case of work this down to your shoulder lines. Okay, all our joints are nicely cleaned up now, so it's a case of let's just test fit these and make sure all is good. I don't see why they shouldn't be. There you go. Our bridle joints are fitting nicely. Happy days. There we go, that sits nicely in there. And then we want this piece. So three and four, these are our half lap joints. Should sit nicely in there if everything is square. So slight little tap of this. Good. A little bit deeper to go on this side, but it's not too bad. And that's our first frame. Where is the square? Here we go. Let's bang on. Let's bang on. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, that's frame number one. Let's assemble frame number two. Everything is lining up with our two frames. Just check this one for square. Good, 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 and good. Oh, there you go. 
I think I might be getting the hang of this woodworking thing. <laughs> right, now, we need to cut a dado inside in this all the way around in the middle of these frames. So I need to set up my router table. I need to set up a quarter bit or a six mil bit and take a 10 mil uh, dado, 10 mil deep. 10 mil deep, six mil wide. So that's what we need to do inside in these. So I'll set up the router table for that now. And uh, I'll get all these joints finished up and fitting correctly. A little small bit of attention on this joint number three here. And we should be good. Then it's a case of sanding and finishing. We need to paint our boards with the blackboard paint. We'll do all that, get all our finish on before we assemble because I won't be able to put the Danish oil on once the blackboard is in place because I don't want to risk getting finish on the blackboard itself because that will upset the blackboard. Right, let's rock on. Okay, we need to route our frame now. So, a couple of things we can mess up here. Make sure that we're routing the correct side. So I've just marked a line on the internal part of our frame to make sure that I route that and not the outside. I wanna make sure that I keep the back of my piece to my fence so I know my numbers are facing out so when I have my, my face side marked. So that's good. The other thing we have to worry about then is the fact that I'm putting a dado in the middle of this I will be running out into the ends of my tenon, so a stepped tenon might be a better job for this, but it shouldn't be too big a deal. I just have to drop onto it at the 10 mil mark here and route through to this 10 mil mark here. So I'm gonna do that now. I'll run through all these pieces and then we'll check for fit. Let's do it. have our dado routed all the way around on all our pieces. It's a good tight fit. It's actually a very tight fit. So what I did was I added just an extra half a mil to the bottom dado, just widen it that little bit so that when I'm pushing down the piece, it'll just sit into that. Because like I say, it's a nice tight fit. It's almost like a perfect fit. And I will be tapping that MDF down through the frame and you can't really hit MDF because you just break it and bust it up. So it has to slot nicely. So the next thing to do now is before we assemble this and glue it all together, we need to sand it all. So I need to get all this all sanded, um, get it ready for finish. Then we can glue it like this. We can paint our pieces, drop them in, then we can glue our top in our bridal joints. So that's, that's the next thing we have to do. So let me sand up all this and then I'll get back to you. We'll paint the blackboard itself with this blackboard paint. I'll show you that. And then we shall get ready for glue up. Let's do that. Okay, this is where I'm at. Everything is sanded up and I have just glued my two half lap joints and clamped them. So they are setting as we speak. When I sanded everything, I sanded everything down to 220 grit and I just ran the sander down every corner just to knock off those hard edges. Um, this will be a child's toy after all and we just wanna keep those edges as soft as we can. So yeah, that's glued up, ready to go. So I'm gonna let that dry now. Now I need to paint the blackboard faces themselves. So that's our next job. So let's get on that. I'll move these to one side and we can paint on top of the table here. Okay, let's do that. Right, I'm just applying this blackboard paint then. And if you've not seen this stuff before, loads of manufacturers do it. This particular brand is just from Rustin's and it's a blackboard paint. You can paint it on timber, your walls, whatever. Anything you want to turn into a blackboard, anything you want to write on. They use it for photography and they also, you just use it for making blackboards. It's nice and handy. It's fairly thick paint, so it goes on. One coat usually does the trick. It's not like a standard kind of paint. So shake well and apply liberally. That's all you gotta do. There's nothing to it really. Just lash it on. It goes on really thick, like I say. We don't have to be too particular with this. There we 
go, as simple as that. This stuff dries pretty quick. It goes on thick, so like I say, one coat is plenty and you can turn any wall in your house into a blackboard if you so choose. Good fun for the kids and uh, for the adults too, if you like drawing on the walls, that is. And uh, yeah, so there we go. Two of them are done now, we'll let that dry. And then we can oil, we'll let our glue dry on our frame, Danish oil our frame, slot these in, and it's almost time to assemble this. Right, let's try and slot these things together then. And hopefully this goes pretty easy. I know it's gonna be pretty tight, but hopefully not too tight. Just like that. Now I'm going to tap down the other one. I might wax the edge of this one with some candle wax just to make it slip a bit better. But uh, yeah, that was a little bit tighter than I was hoping for. But it's a good solid fit. It's a perfect fit. But uh, yeah, a little bit hairy to get it in. Okay, you should have a better view from there. So candle wax was definitely the way to go. So I just waxed the edge of the second one with, with some candle wax, just rubbed it up and down. And I was just able to push it straight down and in, slot it in perfectly. So now we need to put the top pieces on. So a little bit of glue on our tenons and then we're gonna tap these down. And uh, that's it, a little bit of touching up around it then and then we can get ready for final assembly. That might happen in the morning because it's getting quite late now and it's about zero degrees inside in this shed. So yeah, let's get the glue up and then we can let this dry overnight. Right, there we go. Our two sides are all clamped up. So we let that top section to dry now. And then we'll do a little bit of touching up on the finish here and there, and we'll do the final assembly in the morning. So I will be back with you in the morning. Okay, our hinges are on and everything is aligned. So when we close it up, everything lines up perfectly, which is what we want. So uh, yeah, just take your time with your hinges. Stick in one screw either side. A little bit of adjustment here and there. They can be a bit finicky, but uh, yeah, just line everything up and then screw them down. And you should be good to go. Right, it's our hooks next, and then we're almost done. Yeah, I think maybe with that angle should be pretty good. So yeah, we'll fix our hooks now. Again, this is nice and simple. We just have two eyes or two loops for the hook. One on this end, the screw in here. He's just gonna hook in like that, just to stop it collapsing, to lock it in place. We'll do one either side. So I reckon about there should be good. So we'll just take a measurement of that. We'll mark it and We'll drill it because the screws are kind of big and I don't want to split the timber. So about there and there, I'm thinking. Voila, one double-sided blackboard. Right, there we go, all finished. A blackboard, a double-sided blackboard for my daughter. 
and she's just coming up on two years old now so she loves, loves writing on stuff so this is going to be ideal for her and uh, it actually make a good shop sign too so if you wanted to leave something like this outside the shop if you know someone who has a new shop you could make something like this for them they could just put their daily notices or daily signs up on it and it will work perfectly too and it's a nice woodworking project you know there's a bit of few skills involved in it little half lap joints two bridle joints you're, you're making a frame you're trying to keep everything square and you're putting a dado inside then to slot in your internal panel so it's a lot like making a cabinet door or something like that you could be putting a glass panel in here or a perspex panel and uh, yeah so something to develop in the woodworking skills let's try it out enough talking the only talks i could find were these big huge massive ones so an old game of x's and o's there we go you can't really play with yourself we let the o's win lovely Works like a charm. Now I must make her a little duster as well to go with it. Works beautifully. Nice. Right, there we go. Another woodworking project complete. And I have to say I quite enjoyed making this one. There's a few little skills in it that will go towards making a cabinet in the near future. So I want to make a little cabinet for some of the tools I have in the shop. So that might be an upcoming project. So a lot of this stuff is transferable into the cabinet doors and stuff like that. So it's a nice little thing to practice with. And it's a little gift for my daughter too. So she's going to love it. So yeah, it was extra enjoyable to make it. And hopefully you guys have found this interesting and you got something out of it. So hit like and subscribe. Comments and questions below. And I shall see you in the next one, guys. Take it easy.